Hello, welcome to Cooking with Aramark. My name is Duran Garner. I'm the general manager of the Aramark Food Service Program. I want to really thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go into a brief culinary demonstration of a few dishes. Come on, join us in the kitchen. So here we are, Casey, Emily, what are you guys preparing for us today? Well, today we're going to make a banana pudding with a twist. Okay, let's see what you got. Show me what you're working with. Okay, so you want to get your ingredients together. Um, go to your local grocery store. Um, we have some fat-free items that we chose to make it more of a healthier option for our audience. We have fat-free whipped cream topping. We also have fat-free condensed milk. We also have French vanilla pudding. Also, get your bananas. We want to get um, fat-free reduced milk. Now, can we use other milk outside yes. of fat-free? You could definitely use skim milk um, okay. and also um, almond milk as well. Whole milk, 2%, all of that's good too? Soy milk, yeah. okay. like that. Okay. Um, also, we have our fat-free cream cheese and also a bag of chessman chip um, cookies. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have Casey mix up our condensed milk and our cream cheese in one bowl. So if you want to get started doing that, um, I will start mixing the vanilla, French vanilla pudding, um, pudding mix powder with the milk, if you could pass me the milk, and I'll get started on that. What you want to do is with your milk, you just want to put at least a cup full. You measuring skills like that, huh? Without, without yes. a measuring cup. Yes, it's I one see, point. I see your work, I see your work. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you mix it up and it's blending well. You don't want any clumps in your pudding. So you have instant pudding right here. You don't have to boil this. Correct. You this do not have to pudding. boil it. But you can make this dish with the boiled pudding. Correct. Yes. Okay. You can do the traditional banana pudding where you make your, uh, your custard over the stove with egg white, egg yolks, and whole milk. And you just cook it until it becomes thickened and then you can do that as well. But this is more of a time-friendly banana pudding here. So this is the quick version of banana pudding. Correct. When you're in a rush and you're getting ready for that family reunion cookout <laughs> and you want to put something together, um, banana pudding is the way to go. Absolutely. Well, my family always made banana pudding with vanilla wafers, so this is some oh, new age stuff. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Chessman's is very good. I know you have the low-fat um, ingredients, but you always want to try and put a twist to it, and the cookies always add an extra flavor to it. We so shall see. <laughs> <laughs> so Casey looks like she's done with mixing um, up the condensed milk and the cream cheese so I'm going to add in the pudding so we can get our custard together. Make sure you get all the ingredients inside. And then Casey's you just want to fold this in so it's well combined. As Casey is mixing um, you want to get your bananas and you would like to slice them up nice and evenly. As she's still mixing, I'm going to start um, presenting, um, putting, assembling the um, banana pudding together. So what you want to do is you want to take some of your cookies and add them to the base of your plate. Do you have to start with cookies on the bottom? No, you can start with the um, bananas or the custard. So there's um, no specific order? No particular okay. order, order. I just like that extra crunch at the bottom of my um, plate. The next topping, I would add the bananas. Casey will add some custard. Any specific amount, or is it just to your, to your nope, liking? No, to your liking. This doesn't look like anything I've ever eaten when it comes to banana pudding, but the point is, don't be afraid to try new things. Absolutely. So what do we do with the, with the other cream? Well, this is the whipped cream, so if you want a little extra topping, um, you can add that as well. And you can just top it off. So okay. you can take Make a nice 
Looks good. So this is that. Not your mama's banana pudding. Correct. <laughs> for the community some creative ideals Aramark has for the lunch program? That's a great question. We've actually worked really hard over the summer to make sure that we brought in some great new products. We, we, what we're trying to do is transition away from a lot of the processed foods and work into more whole muscle proteins. I think it's really important that we get the students a, a better meal and a better product for our students. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, we continue to drive the initiatives and all of our focus to improve the food quality overall for all of our students. So this is just a start for us to build on what we've already uh, started doing in, in past years. Tell us about some of the menu ideals you have. Well, on our menu this year, we're going to try and work in more home style menu items. We're going to have like a Salisbury steak. We're going to do a meatloaf this year. We're really excited about some of the new options we have coming out. Will there be any new stations? We're actually, with our new stations, we're adding a couple things starting out at our high schools. We're going to have a smoothie station being added. And we're also working on some of the menu items, such as some of the Hispanic dishes. We also want to try and work in some home-style dishes, such as a meatloaf or a Salisbury steak, something like that. Yeah, so specifically when it comes to the smoothie stations, we're talking about rolling out two smoothie stations to two of our high schools, Camden High and Woodrow Wilson. We're going to start there. If it's successful there, then we're going to start executing and rolling out to other schools. In terms of making our menu a little bit more authentic and site-specific, we want to roll out some Hispanic dishes, some home-style soul food type dishes and things like that. And we just pulled that information from the student surveys because that's really what our students are really looking for. So that's the direction we're going to go with our menu this year. For coordinators who are interested in food for their after school program, how can they begin that process? Well, we, for the last four years we've done a great job with our coordinators. They've done uh, very well with emailing and calling me to get all that information. Uh, all you need to do is, for the coordinators going to be rolling the programs out in their schools, all they have to do is email me. The first thing we'll do is set up a meeting to go over some menu options that we have available and then we'll talk about the application process. Step one would just be emailing me, we'll go through the application process, we can talk about all the products and options that we have available, and then we'll talk about some of the days you're going to be running your after school program. What are some of the snack options you provide? That's a great question. We actually try and cater our menu towards each coordinator's needs, depending on the days they're running the program and the building that they're going to be located. Uh, what we need to do is first when we settle down on that menu we'll talk about some of the options that are available which uh, for the national school lunch program you have to choose out of those five for the snack program it's very similar except you need to choose two the options that we have are the fruit and vegetable that's going to be out of the one component and then the other three components are your grain meat alternative or your milk yeah so i mean consistent with what we do with the breakfast and lunch program. We want to offer variety options to the students. So we try to gear the menu around what the students are really, really liking, what they take. So Lou sits down personally with each coordinator and goes over those options and we have a menu that we provide to them and then they go through the selection process at that point. Okay, and can you just uh, provide to us your contact information for sure. coordinators? Sure, I can be reached at abruzzi-lewis at aramark.com. For more information, we can sit down and go through some more details. Tia, Miss Jerry, I'm hungry. What do you guys got? Uh, today, we're going to make some pizza flatbreads. Uh, they're light. They're a good thing for kids to make at home when the parents aren't around. It's quick, it's easy. And you can make it with vegetables. When we have here, we have red onions, mushrooms, and chopped spinach. Okay. We have shredded mozzarella, shredded cheddar, a little salt, a little pepper, tomato uh, pizza sauce, and garlic and olive oil. Okay. Uh, this this dish is quick, it's easy, and we're gonna get started. Hope you enjoy. Go for it. Okay. First, we take our flatbread, which you can find in any grocery store. They have different varieties. We want to brush both sides with the garlic and olive oil. Then we want to toast it in the oven. Just 
just a minute or so. While that's toasting, um, I just wanted to make some pointers that a lot of times in the summer it's hot. People don't feel like doing a lot of cooking, have the oven on all day. This is something that you can get in and get out, sit outside on your deck, and enjoy. Okay, now I think our flatbread has been toasted enough. We're gonna make two varieties today. We're gonna make one with vegetable and cheese and another with uh, a pizza, just pizza sauce and cheese. Okay, first we'll start with our vegetable on this side. Spread your spinach, your onions. You wanna kinda of layer it so it gives it a good color. Then we layer it with the mushrooms. You can top it with your favorite cheese, cheddar or mozzarella or both. We're gonna do both. Gives it a good color and gives it a different flavor. Okay, then we sprinkle a little pepper. And the salt. And then we'll drizzle just a little bit of the garlic and olive oil on top. Then we'll do the traditional tomato sauce. Pizza. On this one also you can do two types of cheese. Cheddar and the mozzarella. We won't add any salt to this since cheese is already salty. And then you bake it in the oven for about two to three minutes. Okay, our time for the pizza is up. Let's check and see how it's going. Mmm, looks good. Miss Jerry, what do you think? A few minutes from the oven to the table. Light, refreshing, and easy to make. Okay, and along with the pizza, we have a beverage. It's called a raspberry lemonade spritzer. Okay, it's very easy to make. It takes a few seconds. We take eight cups of ginger ale. Then you add your lemonade. This is, you can buy any variety. We chose to use country time, but you can buy any type of powder lemonade and add three quarters of a cup to your ginger ale. Don't Let that fizzle down a little bit, then we stir it. Add the raspberries.
add raspberries into the beverage. And you can save a few to garnish your cups with. And you fill your cup with ice. Serve it up. Add a slice of lemon to it. Yep. And there you are. A nice and summer drink. Voila. Nice That's summer very... fresh meal with a cool drink to go along with it. Enjoy! For someone interested in employment with food services, where can they go to fill out an application? Aaron Mark will take your application at Wiggins School at 400 Mount Vernon Street. Yeah, or you can give us a call at 856-966-5120. Okay, and what opportunities exist with Aramark or with your... Within Aramark at Camden, we have lead food service workers, we have uh, food service workers, drivers, drivers helpers, um, and substitutes. We're always looking for good subs. Yeah, we have a ton of different positions. Right now, currently, we're not in the process of recruiting anything outside of substitute workers, but you should come down anytime and feel free to apply. We're always accepting applications and looking for highly qualified, hardworking people. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. No problem. So Lou, Aldi, what do you guys got for us? What did you prepare? What we're doing today is a grilled portobello mushroom panini. Okay. Uh, the ingredients for that is Lou. What we're going to do today, we're going to have the grilled portobello mushrooms going over on the grill. We have our diced tomatoes, diced onions. We're going to use a provolone cheese today on a sourdough bread, then we're going to top everything off with a nice arugula salad. So let's go to the grill and start assembling this, this great sandwich. Okay, we're going to begin to uh, fry our onions. <laughs> While the onions are, are going, um, I would like to start by grilling our mushrooms. This is a really good sa uh, sandwich. You can actually do this in, on the grill outside. You will just roast your onions in the oven inside and the, the grill, grill mushroom, you can put it with a little bit of oil right on the grill. So while all these preparing grilling over the portobellos, Lou, let's get started making the, uh, the salad. This is gonna be a very basic salad that's gonna go on top of our sandwich. What we're going to do is we have our arugula right here. So Lou, talk to me about your, uh, your vegetable choice. Why are you using arugula? We're using arugula. It's a nice change up from our normal pace of the of romaine or any other kind of lettuce. It gives us a nice crisp bite to it. And we're going to be doing that when we mix in some more ingredients and we're going to top our sandwich with it. It's going to come out really nice. We're just going to throw in some of this balsamic glaze. So what exactly is balsamic glaze? Balsamic glaze is a regular balsamic that's been reduced down with a little sugar added to it. You can find this in your any one of our local stores and it would be somewhere around the dressing aisle. And what is the balsamic glaze for? For some acidity? The balsamic glaze is definitely going to give it a little bit of acidity okay. and it's a little bit thicker than your normal balsamic. Okay. It's actually cooked down a little bit further. We're going to add in a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil and then some tomatoes. We don't have to do anything real crazy because a lot of the flavor is going to come out of the portobello mushrooms itself. So here we have our basic salad that's going to top off our grilled portobello sandwich. Now that the mushrooms and the onions have been cooked, we can uh, start assembling the sandwich by grilling our bread. <clears throat> we got a nice uh, sourdough bread here. We're going to top it off with some provolone cheese. While the bread is being grilled, we can start topping off our portobello mushroom. 
First we have our fried onions. <coughs> we put on some of our roasted red peppers. And I'd like to top it off with another slice of cheese so that it holds everything together. Lou, could you hand me the arugula salad, please? Here you go, Ali. Thank you. Top it off with some fresh arugula salad. We close up our sandwich. And cut it in half. And there you have it. Roasted grilled portobello mushroom sa uh, sandwich. Can you tell us a little bit about the services Aramar provides to Camden School District? That is a very, very good question, Shoshana. Um, as the GM in this district, it's my job to make sure that we maintain our level of commitment to the district and our partnership to the Camden School District is very, very important to me and our entire team. So some of the things that we provide right now currently are breakfast, lunch, the after-school snack program, supper program. We do all the vending in the district. We also do catering. The only thing that we really don't do right now for the district is concessions. And we've been in some talks to try to enter that realm as well. I'm really excited about that opportunity if it presents itself. But right now, currently, those are all the services that we currently provide to the school district. But looking to take advantage of more opportunities as they pre present themselves. Wonderful. And what is the breakfast program? So the breakfast pro program right now is universally free for all students. So essentially, in every school, every day, Breakfast starts anywhere as early as 7.30 and it ends as late as 9 o'clock, depending on the school, it's site specific. It's based on what the principal wants to negotiate and how they want to facilitate the program within their school. So right now, basically, our staff comes in, we provi provide the breakfast, the students come through our line, they get a healthy, nutritious breakfast, and then they go to their classroom. Right now, that's the way it's currently constructed. The breakfast program is universally free for everyone. We have multiple options available every single day. Um, we, our breakfast program has grown a lot with the, um, with the district's ability to allow us to administer a universal free breakfast program and a breakfast in the classroom program that we uh, in introduced this year to the school district. Oh, wow, wow that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And are there any other services Airmark provides in support of the community? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, providing services to the, to the community is one of our biggest pillars within our program. Um, again, we're in a privileged position to be here, so we want to take advantage to support the school district and support the community at large. So some of the things that we've done in the past, we have a student scholarship program. We give out five to $10,000 every year in student scholarships for those students interested in pursuing uh, further education in culinary arts. We have a student intern program where every year we approximately hire about four or five students every single year. Um, out of the program, we've been doing that for four years, we have about four or five students that are now full-time permanent workers with us through that program. Um, we provide um, funding for the South Jersey Food Bank to support families in need with, around the city. We also donate money to, the, uh, to South Jersey Hunger Stock. Uh, we've donated uh, funds to the Special Olympics. We do a multiple array of things, and uh, if anyone's interested in participating in that, just reach out to me directly and I'll see what we can do for you. Uh, my, my contact information is uh, Garner, G-A-R-N-E-R -E hyphen Duran, D-A-R-A-N-D, at aramark.com. Thank you very much. You got Wonderful. it. It is my turn. What I have prepared for you guys today, I have a teriyaki glazed salmon dish. It's a very, very simple dish, very, very easy to make, very, very e easy to source, and it's very, very good. It's very, very simple. I just got a, a local bag of some vegetable stir fry, which consists of some broccoli, snow peas, carrots, uh, shredded cabbage. We have some salmon. I have it marinated in three different ways. We have mesquite, we have Cajun, we have garlic and herb, some simple teriyaki sauce with a little bit of Parmesan grated cheese. I'm gonna take it over to the grill and I'll get started on how we, how we prepare the dish. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically take our vegetables, we're gonna get them on our grill. You can cook this preparation in many different ways. You can do this on a grill, you can do it on a stove, you can do it however you do. Me, I'm the creative type, so I get busy. This is what I do, okay, this is my home right here. So once you put your vegetables on for a little bit, you wanna spread them out a little bit. You wanna cook your vegetables to taste. I mean, I like mine, it's very al dente, sort of how you would get in a Chinese store. I don't like my vegetables very mushy, so I'm gonna let them go for about, you know, five to six or seven minutes on the grill in that form of a preparation. From there, I go and I grab my, my pieces of salmon. I have the mesquite, I have the garlic, and I have the Cajun. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil down on my grill. I'm gonna go face down. Now with this type of a dish, you're not limited to just using salmon. You can use cod, flounder, tilapia. You can use a bunch of different variations of different things. But salmon is just one of my favorite. And with these type of dishes, salmon takes the teriyaki and things like that very, very well. You want to sit and let this rock out for about five to ten minutes. And then in five to ten minutes, you'll come back and you'll start your plate assembly. Okay, so at this point now, our vegetables have been going and cooking for about five to ten minutes. We turned our salmon. We have a nice little caramelized grill uh, surface on our salmon right here. Me personally, I don't like my fish overcooked. So what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of that tenderness within the middle. Now I think it's time to add our teriyaki sauce. Just a little bit because this can have a decent amount of sodium so you don't want to kill yourself. You add a little bit of teriyaki to your salmon. If you notice, I didn't use any salt because teriyaki has a decent amount, like I said, of sodium in it. You do a final toss of your vegetables. If you were here smelling this, you would feel how I feel right now, but you're not. So you just have to go over the recipe. We have some nice vegetables. Salmon ready to go. It's time for us to plate. One salmon, two salmon, three salmon. These are the moments where I say, Mama, I made it. I want to get cute. I'm going to finish it and top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And you have a teriyaki grilled salmon dish with some summer saute. This is what we do. So once again, your local Aramark team just wants to take this opportunity to say thank you and thank this district for the partnership and our ability to provide this service to the students. We take a lot of pride in what we do. We love what we do. We're very passionate about what we do. Our model here is very, very simple. This, this is, is what, what we, we do. do.